8.8. So 8.8 .8 is numerical approximation. So we've done a bunch of different integration techniques, right? U sub, by parts, tables, trig sub. What if we can't integrate a function analytically? So what we've been doing is we've been finding the exact solution. We found the analytic solution, the exact solution. Now we're saying, oh my gosh, what if there is no technique that works for an integral? Because that happens a lot. Um, so numerical approximation, can you guys remind me of some numerical approximations that we did before? Riemann sums, right? We did the left Riemann sum, right Riemann sum, and then point rule. Those are all numerical approximations. Here we're going to do a couple more numerical approximations. I don't know why this is later, later on, but it always shows up like that. Um, so the numerical approximations we're going to do now are the trapezoid rule. So remember, can somebody, so we did numerical approximations where left Riemann sum, right Riemann sum, midpoint rule. So how did we do those? How were those formulas figured out? Area of a rectangle, right? We drew a rectangle, we used the height as either the left endpoint, the right endpoint, or the midpoint, right? Okay, so now instead of doing, drawing a rectangle, we're gonna do the trapezoid rule, so we're gonna draw a trapezoid, okay? Doesn't that already, like, if you picture a triangle with a curve compared to a trapezoid with a curve, doesn't that seem a little more exact already? Right, like if I have some sort of a curve like this, if I draw a rectangle for it, even if I did the midpoint rule, or if I do a trapezoid, oops, I'm not very good at the drawing, but if I do a trapezoid, it seems like there's less area here, right? Seems like there's less mistake here, whereas here's an uh, overestimate, here's the underestimate, right? So the trapezoid already appears to be more exact, right? Okay, so who can remind me what's the area of a trapezoid? Do you have a question? Oh. Awesome, I like that you're already putting it in terms of an interval, so let's do that. Oh, so, okay, so we can just do base height, whatever. Okay, so one half, I'll call this base one, this is base two. Usually you see the trapezoid the other way, right? But we wanna do it with the x, y axis. Um, and then we'll call this the height. So one half base one plus base two times the height. Okay, good. So if we draw repeated trapezoids, here's the formula for the trapezoid rule. So that's just to remember where the trapezoid comes from, or the, that's to remember the area of the trapezoid formula. So here we're gonna use the trapezoid rule to approximate the integral, where A and B are divided into N subintervals of equal length. So here's our subinterval, right? Here's our left endpoint, here's our right endpoint, and that's our interval, and we're gonna draw trapezoids here. Okay, delta x is b minus a over n. Uh, let me see if I printed out. I thought I had printed out um, the derivation. But if you wrote out the formula, if you do it a trapezoid here, did a trapezoid here, did a trapezoid here, this is the formula you would get. Where delta x is your height. No, it's not. It doesn't look like height, but that's what it is. So you have delta x over two times f of the left f of the left endpoint plus two of two times the inner points and one times the endpoints. So you're using all of the points. So if we wrote this out and we drew trapezoids for each of them, we could do algebra to get this. Okay. All right. So that's all. So um, number one, estimate the integral from zero to one of ec x squared by dividing zero, <coughs> the interval zero to one into two trapezoids of equal width. This e to the x squared can't, there's no exact solution. All of the techniques we've done, we cannot integrate this. We would have to approximate it, okay?
So we'll start with that. We'll start with uh, another problem from 8.7 next class, and then we'll do we'll do this one. If you guys have any questions, let me know.